What was more difficult, the Navy SEALs or the Foreign Legion? S selection? Yeah. SEAL training. Okay. Much harder. It's longer also. Mm -hmm. And in the Foreign Legion, the psychological problem is way, way worse. In what it's, sense? You're feeling isolated. You know, everyone's got that feeling of aloneness. You're not with your bros. You're, it's a harsh environment also. It's very, it's more prison-like than, so it's not fun. <laughs> and it's that you're fighting through that and feeling of loss, that feeling of loss that you're there and what am I doing here? That a lot of guys have that. So you have a desertion problem also. Guys will just say, fuck this, I can't take it. And it's a pressure, it's, a, it's an institution that's built around like you said, they got all these lost souls coming. So how do you get those guys? You put them under a fucking heavy thumb, a real heavy thumb. Like you walk across the grass wrong in the Legion. They're putting you in fucking jail. And I'm not even really exaggerating. They're hardcore. Your movements are all reported. You're not going out of the base without reporting and getting cards and checks in. Like your autonomy is very minimal. So that creates an, uh, another level of pressure. And that's all your whole contract. That doesn't end at boot camp. That's five years of that. That's, that's good for you though, because that's discipline that you never had away from all the bad stuff. Man, I, man, I, I didn't fucking, well, the truth was it was nice for the time, but after like the first year, I didn't need that. It was actually, I needed more. And so I started instituting more discipline on myself. Like if they would set the wake up time at five, I'd get up at three and I'd work out in the bathroom. And I started like, instant, that's when the something clicked, when I realized the only way to my salvation and my inner peace and clarity is to just fucking crush myself on discipline and just never miss so that's what i started to do in the legion when i started to kind of see the light do you regret not doing that in the navy seals i don't regret anything well i shouldn't say that i regret things in my life but man i just wasn't there yet mm -hmm. i couldn't i couldn't regret it i wish it, i don't i don't want to wish my life away i should have been more responsible to, for my teammates for my team for my and just been less selfish that's what i that's what i really would have liked to have been less selfish and had a better more mature understanding of the situation i was just seeing it like yeah i'm going out and party but i didn't look at it like hey if i get in trouble here uh, i'm gonna cause a bunch of fucking problems for the team for my leadership for all these people that are trying to get mission readiness and that that's what i wish i would have seen mm -hmm. so once she is a five-year contract you need to stay there for five years no matter what? Yeah, well, yeah, the, technically, yes. And what's that feeling then? So what happens if you people didn't want to be there? They just fucking desert. Man. They go AWOL. Yeah, yeah, they go home. And then it is what it is, you know. It's it's a unique thing, and it's a big problem in the Legion. It's what's, not, what's that like then, fighting for another country? Was that not weird, or was it just, it, you, just you just wanted to fight, do you think? Yeah, I'm, I, <clears throat> I've had moments where, it's, where people have posed me questions, and I was, my loyalty is the United States, right? I mean, my loyalty is the United States. It's just, it, it'd be the UK or United States if there's an issue. So I would never have that, like, that conflict. You what know, happens I, if that, if American France went into war, I'd imagine they would have to kick you out. But what happens if somebody said, because obviously you'd have been a spy or yeah. whatever, but how would that, how would that then happen? Yeah, somebody asked me that question the other day, man. I don't know, man. That That's a, that's a heavy thing to think about, obviously, because, you know, there's those alliance ties for so long, man. I don't, I mean, they, the geopolitical scenario seen in the legions unique because Ukraine just happened, right? Mm -hmm. We have Russians and Ukrainians in the legion a lot. So that, that wasn't, but it was seamless, really seamless. They let the Ukrainian guys go home. A lot of them went home to fight. And, you know, they let, they give, they gave them time to go get their families and shit. And some just stayed and fought. So, and then they can come back to Legion if they want. It's wild, man. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, man. So you get Russians, Ukrainians, but they're fighting for France, but yet France let them go and fight for their own country. Yeah, well, they let them go for a little bit and some guys just didn't come back, but they're like, hey, you could come back if... How many people was in them? How in, many people was in the Foreign Legion? It's about 8,000, 7,500. Oh, everyone's strong, mad, kind of up for it. Man, everyone's pretty good, but it... The Le French Foreign Legion is a one-stop shop for France. They don't outsource anything. So the French Foreign Legion in that 7,500 guys has their own tanks, has their own medical staff, has their own administrative staff, their own cooks, their own security, their own parachute regiments, mountain regiments, engineering regiments. Hmm. 
combat divers, right? They don't outsource shit, so they need all types. They need guys slanging an A-dub and guys working in the kitchen, right? So they need that whole spectrum. So not everyone's a machine of war like me, you know, or some Belarusian you see, you know, but th so they, they have a nice spread. Because you got guys there who just want the nationality and the money, you know? They want a better life for their family or whatever. Yeah. Who's the toughest boys you came across? What country? Man, I would say Slovakians, Belarusians, and um, yeah, those are the, the two groups are pretty tough. You got a lot of tough Brazilians also. Have you? See, I was, the Russians and the Polish and stuff, they're just tough bastards. Yeah. They just seem that, fucking different. Yeah. The, we don't have a lot of Poles. There used to be a lot more Poles, but every Pole I've met is tough as shit. And um, the Slovakians are all big and tough. Scottish. <laughs> man, we <laughs> got a couple across We got a couple. Yeah, we got a couple good Scots, man, and they're always funny as shit, man. <laughs> good good news. What you want to know something interesting? Yeah. The oldest guy, the oldest guy in the French army is a legionnaire, and he's a Scottish dude. He's badass too, yeah, bro. Fucking love He's that. crushing it, bro. I think in the, in the SCS selection as well, it's the majority of the Scottish that pass. Really? So I don't know what the fuck it is. Tapped something. Yeah. Maybe fighting for years. I don't know. Yeah, you guys got that old school fucking yeah. battle axe genes, yeah, bro. Crazy. Did you see that though with a lot of people as well, where they were brought up, you thought, okay, he's tough. What I really started to see was the guys who grew up real poor. You know, those guys have a different mindset of mm -hmm. what's tough. You know, especially you got those guys that grew up poor in Ukraine, you know, and or poor in wherever. Their, their level of what is considered bad and good is different than some guy who's who's just had it easy his whole life, you know, that they're they're like, this isn't bad. How long have you done now? Is it four years, five years? How yeah, I'm, almost, I'm coming up on my end, <clears throat> my, my end of my contract, man. I'm pretty much on terminal leave now. So you're allowed to speak out and stuff and do your videos? Yeah, well. <laughs> you're doing it anyway. I got a little friction. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Did you? Yeah, because I thought it was going to be. So I kind of game plan. I was like, man, I want to help people. I want to get like kind of this message out. So, but I had to get right first. And I still had moments where I wasn't fucking perfect. And then I just, at one time, like, last year, it was like, look, I'm locking it on. I can't help anybody if I'm not 100%. Right. And it's going to be, it'll show I'm not authentic. I'm not living how I'm, I preach. So then I just started to do that. Then when I was so clear and was really experiencing this mental clarity and this inner peace, and I was like, you know, this, okay, I got to figure it out. I cracked the fucking code. I know how to do this. And I built out a system, which I show guys, it's a daily system. But I was like, part of it, you got to get your face out there. You got to be talking, man. You got to, people got to know who you are. So, I push record on the camera and I started my, my YouTube and I was like, you oh, know, probably I got some time. It won't blow up right away. It'll give me some time. So right before I get out, then, then maybe I'll get some heat. It fucking blew up immediately. First video and uh, second video got 400,000 views already. And it's not even like seven, eight weeks. Right. And I'm like, okay. Then I started getting the heat. They're like, Hey, <laughs> you need to take it down. So I had to be in an administrative legal battle with the foreign legion over it still. Yeah. Yeah. So you and kind of huh? argument with them just now? Yeah, and so I'm still, but because they, know, I'm positive on it though. I'm not, I'm not ripping. I'm actually very grateful for these. They saved my fucking life, man. And I yeah. say that, so they understand it. And so it's kind of just this cold war right now. They're just kind of waiting it out. I'm gonna get out soon. It's all good. It's all good on the up and up because they know I'm not gonna be disrespectful. And so they just like he's not really saying anything bad. I'm actually quite the opposite. 